This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm now aware of sub-basements, and I've seen The Phantom of the Opera, the silent horror drama from 1929 that has pretty much become synonymous with horror films in general. Though, after watching it for myself, I'm not entirely sure how that happened. Directed by Rupert Julian, it follows the events that befall the personnel of a Parisian opera house, supposedly haunted by a figure only known as the Phantom. Such a person does exist, and his attention is almost entirely upon making a star out of Christine, an understudy for another singer in the cast. He is successful and manages to entrance her, further declaring his love for her upon leading her underneath the opera house. However, Christine chooses the love of another man, drawing the Phantom's anger and leading him to wreak havoc upon those in his way. Almost a hundred years out from its initial release, it's easy to say that the story and its adaptation in this film, and most of all Lon Chaney's performance as the Phantom, are indeed one of the largest influences on other horror films even to this day. But after having actually seen the movie now, I kind of wonder how exactly that came to be the case. The movie leans more towards its dramatic storyline than any more traditional horror elements, and even when it does involve the Phantom, he's portrayed more as a jilted and obsessive lover than a monster. Granted, he does display monstrous and psychopathic tendencies, so maybe it's more that he's less of a monster and more of a disfigured human. Either way, he's really not all that scary, though his presence is pretty domineering and demanding. Unfortunately, the same can't really be said for the rest of the film's cast, which plays into the usual conventions of silent acting, and otherwise fall back on one-dimensional personalities and motivations, especially Christine's lover, who pretty much has no other focus in The Phantom of the Opera other than to ensure her safety. Background characters have more complete story arcs than he does, in any case, they aren't too much of a detriment to the film overall, but certainly don't add as much as they could as individuals, especially with some roles seemingly spread out when they could have been condensed to a single character. Speaking of silent conventions, the film actually tends to buck the usual trends and manages to incorporate some more creative use of its technical elements most of all in its cinematography, which is able to express the great scale of the Opera House setting and the many patrons and crew members both within it and outside of it. There's also a great use of tinted colors in the film, which help to set mood, a sense of eeriness and discomfort, and in a few cases some other elements such as heat and fire. There's even a notably forward-thinking use of full color in one of the film's scenes, seemingly done to both present a sense of luxury and hedonistic pleasure, as well as to outright showcase the technology. Overall, The Phantom of the Opera isn't very scary, nor is it very compelling outside of its technical prowess and grand production value. If anything, though, I would say that the film's long-term staying power lies more in Lon Chaney's Phantom, which has a commanding presence in every scene and a rather unforgettable physical design. His character is heightened by the film's overall atmosphere, which seems to have an emphasis on emptiness and shadows, and death or torture hiding under every surface. While that tension is broken up a lot over the course of the film, there's still enough to see that the parts which were worth influencing the future of horror certainly deserve that distinction. The Phantom of the Opera Rupert Julian, 1929 Three stars
I'd say that it's worth seeing if you've got the time. That's it for this review. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more reviews in the future. I gotta go check and see if this theater has any basements. I don't want to find out the hard way that there's been someone here all this time.